Hello, everybody. Welcome to East Garden Service. Hello. Can you say each other? Say hello, hello. to each other. Hello. <laughs> praise God. Okay, we are ready for worship and praise. Okay. Um, this week, I hope and pray that through this uh, service, uh, we'll bring our Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Parents, and true parents into our life, and we go one step uh, closer to our, our prayer and then worshiping our Heavenly Father and true parents in our life. Thank you so much, and welcome once again. Today, I want to talk to you about Kingdom catching. <laughs> oh, praise God. You know, we've been, as, as you guys remember, uh, every week uh, since OSDP, uh, we've, been, we've been working on the parables of Jesus, the mysterious parables. Now, these are parables that are 2,000 years. For 2,000 years, it's been so hard to understand the meaning of these parables. Now, we started with the parable of the weed, and that was when we did OSDP together. But then after that, every Wednesday, we've been going after one or two of these parables. I believe the second week, we did the parable of the sower, and then we did the parable of the merchant, the pearls, and the parable, and, uh, parable of the hidden treasure. Then we did the parable of the mustard seed and the parable of the yeast, right? And we did all these parables that so impossible to connect, so difficult. Today, we're actually going to look at the parable of the net. And this is actually the last parable um, in Matthew 13, and it's connected to two parables. So there's a parable of the net, fishing net, actually, and then the parable of the owner of the house. Okay, so Jesus is talking about all these things. We finally have the password because the Lord of the Second Advent reveals so clear the password of absolute good sex. And oh my God, they unlock. All these parables begin to unlock. Oma, you want to say something on this before I start? Uh, before I start, before we start sermon, uh, I'd like to um, uh, say thanks for everybody who uh, sent the mail and a message to encourage the good sex ministry that we are um, having here. And also, on the other hand, we got several um, messages from Phil that saying, uh, through this good sex ministry, they um, actually feel uh, deeply judged. And even further, they feel condemned as a blessed family because of their given such difficult situation. And uh, if that um, if that caused, um, you know, we kind of after we heard that, I I personally felt uh, deeply, you know, um, pain that our members, some member felt that way. And I like to apologize for that. But one thing that is very clear for us is uh, this is a truly true father's core teaching. It's something is there, and true father wish all our blessed family to have. And what we believe is uh, as long as we come before our Heavenly Father and true parents with a humble heart and admit that we are a sinner and we need a savior in mm. our life, then, then true parents will forgive them. And no matter mm. what situation, what blessed family situation they are in, I truly believe that, you know, that, that I mean, I, 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 we as a community, Unification Church community, we love them and we need them and we cherish mm. them. So, and we also, you know, those, those family who has a difficulty in their marriage, they also have a second generation who, who they love so much. And, you know, as a parents, I'm sure they also, no matter what situation they are in, they want their parent, children to have a good sex um, life in the future. So this is uh, something that our first generation didn't have privilege, but for our second gen or third gen, and we absolutely want them to have a blessed, good sex uh, life in their blessing, and mm. that's where we can find hope in. So thank you so much for um, uh, your um, feedback, and we'll always welcome your feedback. Thank you so oh, much. Praise God. Thank you. Um, <laughs> You know, we have to remember there's a process, 
And nobody's perfect, you know. And so we want to, every week, all we're doing, we want to improve every yes. day, every week. We don't have to make huge leaps, you know. We can make tiny leaps, tiny, tiny steps. And then watch, two, three years later, God has worked a miracle. You don't even you won't so notice it that. day to day. That. But when you look back three years from now, then we say, my God, life has changed. Okay, so let's get to the parable of the net, people. Let's get to the parable. Let's never lose hope. Okay, Matthew 13 and 47. Through 52. Let's read together. Let's read it. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Right? Have you understood all these things, Jesus said? Yes, they replied. He said to them, therefore... Every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. Ooh, Lord. Oh, Jesus is talking so deep, so deep today. You know, here, you remember when Jesus, even in other scriptures, Christ refers to, tells his disciples to be fishers of men, right? To get, to, he relates fish, or the ocean, the fish, with people that we must eat, witness to, okay? So here, of course, in this parable, we can understand that the fish are people. There are all kinds of fish, as you see in this parable. The net is thrown down, and it catches all kinds of fish. Big fish, small fish, white fish, black fish, yellow fish, blue fish, whatever. All, all different types of fish. Jesus also is talking about the net. The net is, you know, these thin strings that are connected together. They intersect, as you know how a net looks. It's supposed to be invisible to the fish. They can't see it. But then they get snatched up in it, you know. They can't see it, but they get snatched up in it. And then they become, they can't get out of it, right? If you think about it, we talked about this actually from the very beginning, from OSDP number uh, in December. What is the thing that catches all everybody's mind? It catches everybody. What is the one thing, the one topic that transcends all the different kinds of fish, all the different nations of people, ethnicities? What is the one thing that's catching them all? It is Sex. That's what. That's the thing that's actually on everybody's mind, right? Whether you're black or white, or you're from, you know, Russia or what, you know, Antarctica, whatever. It. This one thing. This one net captures all. Okay. So here we can see that sex is the thing, the net that catches every one's or fish, fish's heart, mind, and body. Sex is the topic, it is the topic that transcends all races, ethnicities, types, and it catches all the fish, all types of fish. This is why it's used on TV, on movies, in talk shows, etc. It's used as a tool to push up ratings, etc. Satan knows the power of this net. He knows the power. So sex is the topic. But Jesus is showing us clearly that there is the cosmic difference between good and bad sex. Remember, the, fishers, the fishermen gather the fish, and then they separate. They separate the good fish, and then they separate from the bad fish. This is critical because, think about it, you cannot mix good sex and bad sex. You can't mix it. You can't have both. You can't have a good, powerful, God-centered, amazing, good sex marriage and be, and be committing adultery or raping somebody or practicing incest. Do you see what I mean? You can't have both. They're mutually exclusive. They have, they're separated. You can't have both. So it's very clear. Jesus is here. The fishermen are separating these. Okay, now, at the end of the age, 
because the Lord of the second advent has clear teaching. He teaches clearly the mysteries, the symbology of the Bible, of the scripture, and reveals clearly the, the value and the holiness of the sexual organs. What we heard, all the, you, what we heard in the translated version in English, you guys heard sexual organs. What we hear in Korea, Korean is penis and vagina. We hear that. That's what we hear all the time, okay, when Father's speaking. We hear even more... Uh, uh, <laughs> lewd and strong <laughs> language, okay? But that's what we hear. When we hear it in Korean, that's what you're going to be hearing. So actually, we have to get over. We have to get over. In America, we got to get over. Whenever I say penis and vagina, I got all these people, oh my God, you know, get everybody. we got to get over that, people. This is, this is what it is. We come from Adam and Eve. Remember last week we talked about it. From Adam and Eve, penis and vagina, that's where we come from. That's how it is. Right? And so those sexual organs, but this is a topic that never we could talk about until the Lord comes. He reveals the mysteries, and he shows us what the parables actually mean. Jesus also refers to the wicked and the righteous being separated by the burning furnace. Remember, from a principal perspective, the burning fire, the fire is what? The fire is the word of God. The fire is a word. John the Baptist says in Matthew 3.11, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. fire. Yes, Jesus says in Luke 12.49, I have come to bring fire. fire to the earth. And how I wish it were already kindled with some firewood or whatever it is. Okay, this means, of course, that we, it's not that we can become self-righteous. Our blessed families, when we're dealing with each other, I'm more holy, blessed family than you. No, this is not right, right? We're, we don't have that position. We don't have the position to separate the good fish from the bad fish, you see? But the fire, the word of God is what does it. The word of God, right? So it's not that anybody who's up here, we are not, we don't, we, we do, are not, we don't want to be, uh, pers- we're not personally, you know, going after people's marriages. Oh, you guys, are, you guys aren't practicing absolute sex in your marriage. You're, you know, like this, right? But it's the word of God that gives us that holy chastisement, which if we humble ourselves to, we can come into God's grace and mercy. We can come into his wisdom and we come into his blessing, his blessing. Oh my God, right? So here we see Jesus saying very clearly how the fire will separate, etc. Let's look at True Father's words. This is True Father's words, Chun on 1040, on, guess what? A fishing net. Let's read it. When fishing with a net, you must cast the weights a little bit further to be able to catch one more fish. Since we are here in the position of the weights, we have to stretch our hearts a little further to try and bring one more person to heaven's side from Satan's side. Right? So here, of course, we see it's not the same. Heaven's side and Satan's side is not the same thing, right? There's a clear difference. We want to bring people from Satan's side to heaven's side, from bad sex to good sex and blessed life, okay? Let's look at Chen Seng Young, 1794. Now, Father, speak very clear. He's, he's speaking now. He's speaking. He's speaking with strength now. He's, this is fire. Here comes fire. Ready? <laughs> Let's read it. For those who have taken drugs and experienced being homosexuals or lesbians, How difficult is it to get out of it? It is human hell. We cannot lose the American youth who are caught in a net like that and end up becoming Satan's prey. Who besides unificationists can save them? If we don't do this, there will be no America. And you see, of course, America here, Father, I've been fighting here for 40 years. And still, now we see, of course, this is now becoming a big issue in America, right? Father, showing that there's a net. The sex has power. It has so much power. Once you get caught up in bad sex, it is so hard to get out. This is what Father's saying. So he's saying, watch out. We got to watch out, and we have to also prepare ourselves mentally strong, become strong to be able to also, look at this, unification is to save the people to bring salvation. Not that we are the Son of God or the, or the Messiah, per se, but we are empowered by the God's Word, right? And that Word is the power that we have, okay? 
Oh my God, how did I miss that star? See that star? I miss that star. I, mean, I just want to make boy. make a point okay, that you know, <laughs> uh, statistics shows that um, uh, teenager in average, they uh, twelve point nine years old, nine years uh, old uh, in America, teenager they experienced uh, uh, first uh, first sexual relationship in America. Twelve point nine years old. It's a very shocking statistic, and uh, it I'm really six. it's real. It's a real thing that bad sex exists in, in our culture. And we truly believe that only thing to fight bad sex culture is through what? Good, you know? good. Yeah, good sex. We truly good. believe that good sex is the only, the holy weapon that mm. can really fight and save American, um, uh, this bad sex culture. That's right. Give us some praise, people. Come on. <laughs> I love that. I love giving her praise. <laughs> okay, guys. Chen Sen Yang, fifteen fourteen. Let's look at it together. Let's read together. Human sexual organs are gifts inherited from the Creator, and the ancestors have remained unchanged through the ages. They are precious gifts, gifts that our ancestors and even God Himself cannot interfere with. If one were to violate them, he would become the flesh and blood of the devil, destroying the principal palace of love, the center of the great way of the heavenly principle. The sexual organs are the principal palace of life, giving birth on the basis of eternal true love as God's pure essence. They are also the origin of a new lineage. Why were the sexual organs created? They were given to you for the great cause of heaven and earth, for the great providential governance of the cosmos. Ooh, my Lord. I'm gonna, let's look at back on the parable of the net. Let's read one more time with, with, the, with the, the, reading the parable of the net with that in mind, the password in mind. Okay, let's read it one more time. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish, all kinds. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up to the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw away the bad. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things, Jesus asked? The disciples should have said no, honestly speaking. If they didn't get it, they should have said no. But they said yes. And then 52, he said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. Okay, here we go. The teacher of the law who becomes a disciple of the kingdom of heaven or absolute good sex between true husband and true wife is the one who understands what the real treasure is, what the ownership, look at Jesus' words, he used the same language, owner of a house. He uses the same language as father, the owner of the house. God wanted to establish his children and lineage on earth through good, holy sex, absolute sex of Adam and Eve, of true husband, original ancestor, true husband, original true wife. Eve's sexual organ belonged to Adam. Adam's sexual organ belonged to Eve. This is the true law. Father said, this is the cosmic law, right? This is the true law. The owner of the house who has the key is the husband and the wife, right? The husband and wife. This only, and father many times will say, only one key, etc. The new and old treasures, we're going to get into that uh, after this quote from Chen Sung Yong 1289. Look at this, exactly the same language that Jesus used. Let's, let's look at it. The key that can unlock the sexual organ of a man is owned by the woman. And the key for the woman is owned by the man. There is only one key for every person. There should only be one key per person. Do you want to possess 10 or 20 keys, as in the case of free sex? Do you want to become a ruined house, house, 
that has its gates open for everyone and does not have an owner? Do you want to become a place that anyone can pass through and come and go at will? Look at that again. Father, uh, the sexual organs as the house. And of course, the gates and the key and the owner, the house needs an owner. Father is so clear. We looked at something similar to this last week. It's not actually the same quote, but it's the similar uh, uh, topic, okay? Now the key to the man's a heart or woman's heart, it's said that, I, I saw this one pastor, he spoke and he said, I heard it said that uh, the key to a man's heart is his stomach. But actually, they were about six inches too high. Yeah. <laughs> all the men are laughing. All the ladies are like, what, what, what is that? <laughs> okay, the key to a man's heart is not just his tummy, right? You, you don't just win a man by making him a nice steak. His father's clear. It's his holy palace. That's what it is, right? It's his holy palace. The key to a woman's holy palace is her heart, is her heart, right? So thus the man as the subject, this is amazing because when you look at the Chinese character, let's look at the Chinese character for sex. This is the Chinese character for sex. And I know Dr. Balco, Mike over here, he also <laughs> used this in one of his speeches, right? After we had a nice conversation about sex. <laughs> but look at the character for sex. This is the character for sex. This radical on the left side is the character for heart. Okay, so that's the character. It's a, it's a simplified version of the character meaning heart. Okay? Um, and on the right side is the character for life. It's for life, right? The key to the heart, the key to life is absolute sex, right? Yes. Is sex. The man as a subject should first give love to his wife, her heart. For women, their heart needs to be unlocked first. Man, we can't just be little, you know, you know, uh, gorillas, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> whenever, whenever we get her waking, you know, shaking our wife and uttering the three words that every woman loves to hear. You, hey, you awake? That is not what a woman wants to hear, right? She wants to hear, I love you, I love you, right? <laughs> right? Don't be no gorillas, people. We got to be, we got to be sons of God, right? We got to unlock the heart. This is key. All right, this is key. From, from men, we got to unlock the heart. We got to unlock this first, all right? We unlock this first, then the, the, the door of the palace gate can unlock, okay? But you got to unlock this first. Got to work on this. Okay, that's very important. If the princess, because we're talking about royal palaces, right? Well, Father said we're supposed to be prince and princesses. How we do that? See, in the world of absolute sex, we become princes and princes, princesses, because we're talking of the royal palace, right? So if the princess welcomes the blessed prince into her holy palace with joy and expressing her pleasure to be with him, you see, this unlocks the prince's holy palace, which then unlocks his heart, which is the thing actually that she wants most is the prince's heart. And this unlocks his heart with gratitude and joy. You see, it's that incredible, incredible give and receive between husband and wife, the unlocking of the hearts and the palace. Father talks about this. We'll look at it in the next quotation, but he talks about the holy place, which is the temple of God, or our, our, that we are the holy temple of God. But also in Old Testament, how we talk about the holy place and then the most holy place. Remember the temples in the Old Testament? Holy place and most holy place. So we are the holy temples of God. We are the holy temple. But where is the most holy place? It's the palace, the palace of love, okay? When this virtuous cycle is happening between husband and wife, where the husband as a subject is initiating to unlock the wife's heart, then by unlocking her heart, really winning her heart, her, her love there, unlocking that. Then the, then the holy palace can unlock. 
Then the husband's holy palace can unlock. Then the husband's heart can unlock. And this amazing power of true love begins, as Father said, remember that? Spinning in a vortex. Remember that last week? Powerful. This is, this is what we're talking about when we're talking about absolute good sex. Blessed sex, right? Okay, Alma, do you have something to say on this? Yes. <laughs> God really truly created uh, one man and one woman to have absolute sex. We truly believe that. Uh, but for women's perspective, um, it's like a woman is always in the giving mode, right? Even whether they have a job in, in, in society or not, they, they feel obligated to take care of children, to do the housework, you know, cooking breakfast and dinner. And when children are sick, they, they are the one who have to go and pick it up and do the consultation with the teacher, the children's teacher. And you know, if they are, they are at work, they have to come back and they have to cook, for, cook dinner for everybody, for family. So woman is always in the giving mode. And then at the end of the day, what they want to do is just the last thing they, the, the, the last thing they want to do is uh, having intimacy with her husband. They, they, they just want to have uh, some, some resting time for themselves. If they are just, uh, not only they are physically tired, they are mentally tired too. Because mm. they're mm. just, uh, it's just, um, they've been giving all day. It, they just need some, some time to rest, just give ourselves break at mm. the end of the day. Mm. But in man's perspective, so for women, it's like another giving time for, for men. Many times women consider, they, they feel that way. That's why mm. they are not willing to initiate a good sex life. Mm. But you know, for, for man's perspective, the, the very reason, the true reason for men want to come back home is to have an intimacy with his wife. Mm. And then that's like the, you know, for, for men, I don't know, I'm not man, so if I'm wrong, please correct me later. But for men, <laughs> physical um, sex is not just uh, the physical thing. Mm. It's, uh, you know, the intimacy with his wife is something that is therapeutic. It's a healing time for them. Mm. It gives uh, acceptance. It gives appreciation to the person, and all the beating and all the stress and all the you know failure he might feel in the society. Mm. By you know woman accepting his woman accepting him at night, or even at day, <laughs> <laughs> accepting Praise his God. man, <laughs> accepting you know her man to. To, into her palace. That's like, means so much mm. for him. It's like a healing time for literally. For many women, Selfish. it's very hard to understand because God designed men and women differently. But I believe this, you know, uh, I believe, I truly believe that, that if women, women practice absolute sex with their husband, that God will bless them more Mm. It's very interesting how God, you know, blesses women. And I, I truly believe this because, you know, when women uh, have, a, 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 have a, a lot of absolute good sex with their husband, their husband willing to help his wife more. And he'll help, around, help her around the house. He will willingly. <laughs> willingly. <laughs> it's the <a> key. <laughs> Preach it. Okay. And then guess what? You know, he will listen to you more. We listen. He'll <laughs> listen to you more. You have, if you have a problem with your husband, you know, he's, he doesn't listen to me so well. And, and I absolutely guarantee you, after you, if you practice more absolute sex with him, then mm. he will he will help you. He will listen to you. And then, you know, truly, God will bless your, your family. And, your, your, you, and then you, you as a human, human being as well. A woman is uh, very um, used to just give and give, give. But, you know, do we really consider, you know, intimacy time with our husband as a giving time? Is this only, you know, we totally just sacrificing our time for our husband? It's like uh, the sacrificing time? It, it's, I think we, we women need to shift our perspective of our sex. This mm. is something that, you know, Heavenly Father mm. dwell with us through our absolute 
renew union with the, with the, our our husband. This is some some wonderful time, and through that, you know, the the husband just like uh, you know my husband explained, this can really unlock her hus your husband's uh, our husband's uh, heart. Mm -hmm. Then what woman ultimately wants is happiness from from their children. We 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 want our children's blessing. We want our husband's blessing, and we also want to be happy too. Mm. So th if that's what we ultimately want, if we really want to get blessed, I think it, it, the absolute good sex practice is the, the I would say it's the way to really bring a lot of a fortune and blessing into our family. Ooh, give her some praise. <laughs> oh my God, see, she's always right. What can I say? So we have to be clear, this is very important, you know, because it's very, you know, you know, people don't want to hear it, but really, male, their biological urge, their biological interest, their fundamental interest in women is their holy place. It is a biological, we want to, of course, we know from scientific perspective, we want to spread our genes, etc. But there's a deeper meaning there, of course. But of course, if the husband, I heard one pastor, he was, he was saying that if of course, when I say something like that, then we, a lot of ladies will say, come on, it shouldn't be just about his penis and just about sex or sex, you know, just, just, that's just so animalistic and things like that, right? <laughs> it should be about companionship and sharing and partnership. I heard one pastor said, if it was truly about partnership and companionship and sharing, we would, men, men, we would rather get a golden retriever. <laughs> it's hard to deal with women for men it's hard to deal with women because many times we get it wrong we don't know we 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 think differently on general right so many times we we can totally make her angry at something that we don't understand why is she angry at me about that what did i do wrong when i talk to my guy friends like that they have no problem what's wrong with that you know <laughs> and so we can screw up like that a lot <clears throat> Right, but, but the key is here that because husband, we have to accept that's a reality, that the holy palace is what your, our, the husband is truly yearning for. We saw even Father said, when you pursue your spouse's sexual organ, you are pursuing God. Remember that? Remember that quote? We did that many, a couple, many times. But we have to remember that the husband has to romance, romance the heart, unlock that heart. Got to be romantic to her. You gotta love her heart. You gotta really love her heart. That's where she feels validated as a human being, as the daughter of God. Remember we talked about that last week, as a daughter of God? We have to really adore her heart. We have to give, I, I always think of it, you know, as, it's like when you go to a, a, you know, a temple or something and you light incense or you light, you put flowers in Japan, right? We have many of these, you put your flowers up there. You make the offering on the altar. What's the real altar here? What's the real altar? Father says clear. What's the real altar? The real holiest temple, the holiest part of the temple. It is the sexual organ. So when we are doing that, husbands, when we are trying to unlock her heart, we're giving her that kind of love, then think of it like making offerings to God. Right, small sacrifices. You pick up, you're picking up a flower, a rose, or you're, you're noticing she has, you know, short socks on today. Honey, that looks beautiful. I love how your ankles stick out. You know, that's real nice. Or whatever, you know what it is? I love this earring today. It's different from yesterday's earring. Or I like that turtleneck, how it fits on your neck. You know, notice these things. Man, Show her you care. Be mindful. And God can bless. You understand? Make the offerings. It's like, you know, it's like making the offerings. We're making the spiritual offering. This is devotion, right? It's devotion. These are devotional practices, right? <clears throat> and things like that. So whenever, you know, I always try to, you know, notice my wife, wherever she got something new on, she's trying a new, whatever, you know, eye color, what is it, eye, eye, eye blush color, whatever, you know, I notice it, I notice it, you know, new eyeglasses, I notice it, haircut, I notice it, you know, new earrings, I notice it, you know, and then I say it. You know, those small things, we got to be into, always into her. You know, and we're always saying, I, I am so loving you all the time. You are amazing, you're amazing. You look every day, every minute. Look at you. You got your short socks on today. I love those. Right? You got your long socks on. <laughs> Beautiful, yeah. Right? <laughs> we are making the kind of artistic offerings right to her heart. 
And these things can be small, they can be large things. One thing that I uh, love about um, Jesus' uh, last parable yeah, when he's, when he's talking about the new treasures and the old, is that this reminds me that when the true, when the, where's true absolute sex, within the blessing of marriage, then, as Jesus says, treasures old and new keep coming, come forth from it. Treasures old and new. That means there's a continual new precious gifts begin to emerge. Our motto in our marriage is every year gets better. Every year gets better. And we've married 15 years now. Praise God. Thank you, True Father, for blessing us 15 years. You know, and every year gets better. Every year. Now, see, marriage is, in every marriage, we have ups and downs. Everybody has them. Every single person. We have ups and downs like this. But the key is to keep that up and down, that trajectory going up. You see? That's the key. You can't stop the up and downs. You can't have a line. It's always going to be up and down. You don't want this. You don't want it going down like this. This is bad. You don't want it just flatlining either. That's not good either. We want to be like this, right? And it's going up like this for eternity. Eternity, right? Amma, you want to say something on that? (laughs) You know, after he... He said, notice your wife and, you know, pick up one flower for her on the way back home from your work. And when we share this, you know, story to uh, one, uh, one husband, one blessed family, and he, uh, one husband came up to us, one troubled husband came up to us saying, you know what, my wife, even though I does those nice things and nice words to her, she does not recognize it. She actually gets mad at me. What did I do wrong? <laughs> <laughs> and he was the one troubled husband. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you know, just like uh, we, um, he mentioned, for women, you have to unlock your, unlock your wife's heart first. <sighs> Otherwise, you know, the, the gift and small things that you do will not be appreciated. This is the thing. Ooh. And, oh, yeah. you know, and for women, uh, this is the message to men. But, you know, <laughs> I like to give a message to women, too. You know, women... We have to really recognize that your husband is making effort. Mm. You know, if he does, you know, bring Praise one God. flower, it, <laughs> you know, it takes a lot of courage for men to do that. Actually, right. you know, he might just That's say, right. "Okay, you, you, I've got this," you know, on the way back home. He might say very casually, "We don't buy roses for other men. We don't do that. <laughs> I don't go buy my MMA training partners. Hey, here's a rose, my friend." But, I don't do that. I don't do that. It, it really, you know, even though he said it very casually, just uh, you know, hand it over the small thing that he he had a lot of put it small gift he had a lot of thought into. He might hand it into you very casually, but you know that doesn't mean that it is very casual gift. It, he thought about it a lot, but he's a little bit shy, you know, to mention that I thought about this, you know, I planned this to buy this, and he doesn't want to do that. And when he does the small gift, and when he does a nice thing, oh, he took out the trash, uh, garbage, oh, dad, you are a good husband. (laughs) Say those nice things to him. And pet the cheeks. She pets my cheeks, too. (laughs) You know? (laughs) Yeah. You know what? For, For women... Um, you know, I, 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 I have to say I love when my husband say, um, notice the little things, little change that I have. If I have a new earring, when he praises, I like it. But you know what? It took me a lot of courage, actually, to say this thing. Because mm. women, we are very uh, easily judged by society and other men and women that we are shallow. Oh, she likes those little things, and oh, she she's very you know into herself. She's superficial. We we actually mm-hmm. have a gut feeling. We feel very you know. Oh, we are not that shallow. We are we are deeper than that. And mm. <laughs> you know what? I I I I only like blue. And I I I don't I don't know. I'm I'm not really like pink. But you know, for women, I think you know it's uh, for me. It at least to courage that to say, yeah, I like pink too, <laughs> and I like when my husband, you know, pray, you know, notices a little thing that I that I have changed. So you know, I think for women, we also need to have that confidence as well, Ooh. and then appreciate your man, oh. you know, when he does small thing. And as I said. Practice good sex, Thank good you, God. Sex Thank you. with your husband. Wow. Come on, give us, give some praise. 
love napkins too. <laughs> now Jesus said in Luke 17 that the kingdom of God never comes by watching for it. Men cannot say, look, here it is, or there it is. For the kingdom of God is inside you, Jesus said. Now, many mystics around, I've seen many uh, mystical uh, or people who are into mystical traditions. They always, you know, say, look, Jesus is talking about your consciousness or your, Jesus is talking about your psychological, you know, emo emotional states or Jesus is talking about your mind. Father's so clear. When Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God being inside you, where is it? He's talking about it. It's in your, God is in your sexual organ. <laughs> he says so clear. God, that's where it is. Just, Jesus is not unlocking the kingdom of heaven like it's in just in your mind or it's in your psychology, it's in your consciousness. It is in the sexual organ, which is the beginning of true love. It is the beginning of true life. It's the beginning of true lineage. It's the beginning of the kingships. Remember, Father? The kingships. The ancestry of the kingship. The princes and princes come from the holy palace. Let's look at Chun Sung 832. Let's read together, 832. Heaven also begins from the sexual organs. So that place also becomes the original palace for the kingdom of heaven on earth and in the spirit world. The original palace of human perfection. Wow. And God's perfection Penis and vagina, people, <laughs> right? The original palace of human perfection and God's perfection. My God, my God. Now, all that in mind, let's go back and see the parable of the net that we looked at today. And let's look at that last section and read together. Keeping that password in mind, let's read that last section together, 52. Let's read it. He said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of the storeroom new treasures as well as old. You see, there is no way to tie all the parables from the parable of the sower to the parable of the weed, the parable of the merchant selling the pearls, the parable of the hidden treasures, the parable of the mustard, the parable of the yeast, the parable of the fishing net, the parable of the house, owner of a house. There is no way to tie these together with one t theme. In fact, we, I, we, I tried to do sermons on, this, on those parables before. I couldn't do it until Father came so clear and gave the password. Now it connects all of these things, all the passwords connect all the parables connect to one theme and they unlock. Today we are done with Matthew 13, everybody, and all the parables there. Unlock with the password. Let's finish. We're going to finish with Sun Sung Young 367 uh, and then 461. Let's read. You think of the whole of your body as yours, but love is not yours. Love is completely in the possession of your partner. In the Old Testament, we find words such as holy place and most holy place. The holy place symbolizes a person, and the most holy place symbolizes the house of love. Every person has a holy place and a most holy place. In other words, the holy place is a house where you can attend God. As for the most holy place, since only God can have dominion of privileged love over it, it is a place to make a relationship with God. There are surely not two high priests keeping the most holy place. There is only one. You should know that long ago, the one who had the key to Eve's most holy place, what is it? Vagina was Adam. And the one who had the key to Adam's most holy place, what is it? Penis was Eve. Okay? And then Chun Sung Young 461. Let's read together. Man's sexual organ and woman's sexual organ are different. For whom do they exist? They did not come into existence for their own sake. Man's sexual organ came into existence for the sake of a woman. Likewise, woman's sexual organ is for the sake of man. Have you ever thought like this? This is not something to laugh about. 
What is the symbol of the love of man and woman? Where is the final destination of love? It is the sexual organ which makes them one body. And it is our prayer that we can start catching the kingdom in our marriages and then spreading to family, tribe, nation, to the rest of the world by unlocking all the mysteries of Jesus with the password that true parents give, with the words that he has given about absolute good sex. Give it up one time for God and true parents. Thank you, Thank you so much. Let's pray. And, and as my wife says, let's be good fish. <laughs> let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this incredible time, Father, to worship you. Father, to remember the power in your words. Father, your word has a power. It has a power, Father, to be able to totally revive, revive our marriages. Yes, Father, we're not perfect. We, we repent before you, Father. We have sin. We are sinners, Father. We need a Savior, Father. We need salvific words that, that Father, quench this thirst that we have. But Father, as Christ said, he who has Christ shall never thirst again, Father. And Father, we have the words that you have given to us, Father. You are unlocking Jesus' parables, the mysteries of the Bible, are unlocking before our eyes, Father. And we are beginning, Father, to understand how important, how precious the holy palace and then the most holy palace is. We thank you so much, Father. We pray that as Father prayed for us many times that we can become divine sons and daughters, princes and princesses of the royal realm, Father, of your royal realm, Father, that we can actualize that in our marriages and spread to the rest of the world. Father, you give us the truth, you give us power, and your word, Father, is the fire, Father. We thank you so much. St rekindle us today. Rekindle us with your spirit, with your Holy Spirit and your word. We pray these things in our own names as central blessed families in all gratitude and praise. Amen and adieu. Thank you very much. Young <laughs> Jinin, would you and Yana then come here for just a moment? Look, we have, we've got something here tonight. Do you know before a man and woman signs a divorce decree, they should hear this message tonight. We have divorce court on TV. True life stories of men and women hating each other and having adulterous affairs. But the key to our constitution, the key to the life of America, if we're going to exist, is in the message that we heard here tonight. Yes. This ought to be on every TV station in America. And I'm praying tonight that it will be in the yeah. near future yeah. that this message, I know it's being broadcast now through our countries, that we want it to be, but America is going to demand for this message that we heard tonight. Would you join me in prayer that God would bless these two with this word to take it to the world? Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight because we have not just heard from our leaders, but we've heard from heaven. Yes. We've not just got direction from Emmanuel, but from your holy word, your ordinance. And God, we ask you that America, not just America, but the world can hear this message. The key that will unlock the prisons, mm. the keys that will help our education system. America fighting in so many different areas when the key to the human body that God has given us this holy temple. God, we ask it to be done in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Everyone said amen. amen. Let's give God some more praise. God bless you. Thank you, brother. Love you so much. Come on, let's give it up. Come on, let's give it up. Thank God. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Ain't God good? Praise God.